Hey kids, Pastor Harris here with Children's Church Online. I'm so glad that you guys could join me this morning. I know it's a, it's a little strange that we're back um, in quarantine for a little bit. We still have a lot of people that are either in quarantine or have tested positive for COVID-19. So this week we're online. Hopefully it'll just be for this week and then next week we'll be able to get back to our uh, regular routine back in the church, back in our new space. I know I'm excited for the new year and for a lot of fun stuff that we've got planned, and I hope you are as well. Today, we're going to start a brand new series on commitment. That's what we're going to be talking about all this month. We're going to be talking about commitment. Now, does anybody have any idea what the word commitment means? Commitment, as we're going to talk about it this month, is basically just this. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into action. So two things, making a plan and putting it into action. That's what commitment means. And today we're going to talk about being committed to hearing God's word and doing it. Not just hearing God's word, but also doing it. So we're going to be talking about that this morning. But before we get into that, I have a couple of things here with me this morning and I need your guys help with something. So as many of you know, I am a big sports guy as you can see behind me. I'm big into football. Uh, it's one of my favorite sports. There is one sport though that I, I, I like watching but I'm not very good at playing it. All right, And that sport is basketball. Uh, so I know I played a couple with a couple of you guys on like Wednesday nights and stuff playing basketball, but you that's about the extent of my basketball skills. It's not very I'm not very good at basketball. So if I want to become good at basketball, I've got two things here that I think might be able to help me become really good at basketball. And I need you guys help to figure out what would be the best thing for me to use if I want to become better at basketball. What is something that I need to use? So the first thing I have here with me today is I went out and I got a uh, basketball, but this is the box that it came in. All right, so this is the box that the basketball came in. And with this box, there is a bunch of different kind of like information on this basketball. It tells you like, you know, how much air you're supposed to put into a basketball. Um, what the grip, what the durability, what the feel of the basketball is. It tells me that this basketball is good for like outdoor surfaces, um, that it's for a recreational play, it gives me warnings on things not to do with the basketball, like playing in a confined area, uh, throwing in a breakable stuff, that sort of thing. Uh, it tells me who made the ball, and it gives me all kinds of different information about the ball. And so I've got this, but I've also got something else, the ball that actually came with the instructions, all right? So this is basically kind of the instructions for the basketball and the basketball itself. Now, if I wanted to become really good or at least a little bit better at basketball, because I don't think I'll ever be really good, but if I want to get a little bit better at basketball, which of these two items do you think would actually help me get better at basketball? The instructions about the basketball or actually using the basketball itself? Now, personally, I kind of favor the instructions. But the truth is, if I want to become really good at basketball or at least good enough to you know, hold my own against Micah on the court, if I want to be able to do that, what I really need to do is play with the basketball. I need to practice. I need to work with the basketball. I can do all the reading about, the, about basketball and about the sport. I can read all the instructions that I want to read, and I can gather all this information, have all this little knowledge inside my head. But if I don't ever actually get out on the court and play with the basketball, and actually practice and try to get really good, at least good enough to beat Mike on Wednesday nights, I'm not ever going to be good at basketball. I may know a lot of things. I may have a lot of head knowledge. I, I may know a lot about the game. But I am never going to be a good basketball player until I actually take the basketball itself, get out on the court, 
and practice and put the things that I maybe I've read about or the instructions that I've read, put them into action. Actually work with the basketball, try to get more coordinated. I'm never going to get taller, so that's not going to help, but I can get more coordinated. Maybe if I work out some more, I can get faster. But if I want to get good at basketball, I need to use the basketball, get it out on the court, and actually use it. Now, here's the thing. The Bible is basically the same way. You know, we can read the Bible. We can know all the stories. We can know what Jesus wants us to do, what he doesn't want us to do. But if we never actually take what we read in the Bible and the stories that we learn and actually apply them to our daily lives, to the things that we do, it's pretty much like if I just read a bunch of instruction manuals on how to play basketball or how basketball works, but never actually went out and played the game with an actual basketball on the court. And Jesus actually tells a story about this, and this is what I wanted you guys to hear today. Jesus tells a parable or a story about two different builders, a wise builder and a foolish builder. And this story that Jesus tells is found in Matthew chapter 7, verses, starting in verse 24. So if you have your Bibles today, you can open up Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 24. I'm going to read us real quick the story that Jesus told about these two very different builders. Jesus says this in verse 24, Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew and pounded that house, yet it didn't collapse because its foundation was on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew and pounded the house, and it collapsed. And its collapse was great. When Jesus had finished this teaching, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, because he was teaching them like one who had authority and not like their scribes. What Jesus is basically saying here is, you can know all the things that I've told you. You can hear all these stories that I've told you. You can see all the miracles, all the great things that I've done. But if you don't actually put them into action, you're like a guy who goes out and builds a house on sand. Now the thing with sand is, when it, what happens when sand gets wet? It gets all mushy, and it's easy to fall apart. You don't want to go out and build a house on sand because the first time it ever rains or anything, and the house is going to collapse, it's going to be lopsided, it's going to make a huge mess. That's what Jesus said. You're like, if you just read God's word and say, okay, I know I'm not supposed to lie. I know I'm not supposed to cheat. I know I'm supposed to be kind to my brother and sister. I know that I'm supposed to not call other people names. But I, I, I know that, but I don't actually do it. I still, I still lie. I still mean to my brother and sister. I still call people a bunch of names that I know I shouldn't. Then Jesus says, you're like that foolish man who went out and tried to build a house on sand. It doesn't work that way. But if you want to be like the wise man who built his house on rock, on solid ground, you know, so that when the rains actually came, the house stood... Kind of like all of our houses are built on solid ground so that when it rains, it, our houses don't collapse or become lopsided or anything like that. Then you're going to be someone who hears my words, hears what I'm saying, and actually goes out and does it. You're going to be someone who says, you know what, I know Jesus has said I'm not supposed to lie. So then next time, maybe I do something wrong instead of trying to lie and get out of it, I'm going to tell the truth. Maybe the next time my brother and sister does something to annoy me, and I promise you they will do something again to annoy you. But this time, you know what? I'm going to do what Jesus said, and I'm going to still love them. Doesn't mean you can't get mad at them, but you're still going to love them. You're not going to fight back. You're not going to call them names. You're going to show the love of Jesus Christ. 
See, that's what I want to encourage you guys this week. This week, I want to encourage you guys to commit to this. Make a plan and put it into action. Commit to this. Is Find some way that you can put what you know about the Bible into action. Something maybe you've heard, heard about not lying, not cheating, stealing, treating people nice, honoring your father and mother. Take something and commit this week to put it into action. Find a way to put what you've read in the Bible, what you've heard me or Pastor Jeff or someone else talk about, find a way to put it into action. Commit to doing that this week and really throughout the next month. Make a plan and put it into action. Tell yourself, I'm going to do this. Because you know what? When you do that, you're, you're like that wise builder who built his house on rock. And so when bad times come, when hard times come, you'll be ready. And you'll be able to stand firm knowing that, you know what, I know what God says I'm supposed to do, and I'm doing it. And I have a real personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So that's my challenge for you guys this week. Commit to taking something you know in the Bible, or you've heard me or Pastor Jeff say, about the Bible and commit to doing that this week. That's my encouragement for you guys. Now, we also have a brand new memory verse for this month. I'm going to read it to you. It's found in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. And it says this, For the training of the body has limited benefit, but godliness is beneficial in every way, since it holds promises for the present life and also for the life to come. All right. We're going to say that together on three. Everybody ready? One, two, three. For the training of the body has limited benefit, but godliness is beneficial in every way, since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Now, it's a little bit of a longer memory verse, but I know you guys will get it down. And basically what Paul's saying is this. Is the training of the physical body, like working out and staying healthy and staying active and all that stuff, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But we also have to commit and train our spiritual bodies. We have to commit to doing the things that God has told us to do. You know, and that is going to have an even more impactful effect on our lives than just like physical exercise or working out. So we're going to continue along that lines this month. We're going to continue to talk about commitment and different commitments that I want you guys to make throughout this month and really throughout this whole new year. We're going to continue to talk about that. But remember, again, this week, what you're supposed to do, commit to taking something you know that Jesus wants you to do, that you've read in the scriptures, read in the Bible, well, and act on, find a way to act on it this week. That's your challenge this week. And I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I know I think a lot of you are going back to digital learning for school this week. I hope you're able to make it. I'll be praying for you guys. I'll be praying for your parents as well. That may be one way that you guys can just commit to um, showing God's love this week is honoring your mother and father this week as you're back at digital learning. So be ready for that. And again, I'll be praying for you. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Always, if you need anything, feel free to reach out to me. Also, if you ever have any questions about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, again, always feel free to reach out to me, to Pastor Jeff, or anyone at the church. We love you guys. We're praying for you. And guys, I, I really miss you. I look forward to getting back together with you guys in church. Hope you have a fantastic week. I'm praying for you guys. And I'll see you soon.